Hi, thanks for joining us today on Real Estate Insiders. I'm Danny Poulos with the Elite Lending Team at Fembi, and our guest today is Mark Green from Short Sale Operations, and I've known Mark a long time. He is the consummate expert on short sales. He was uh, helping people with their short sales before they even knew what they were. So he's going to give us an update today on uh, some of the new things going on and, and get, bring us all up to speed. So uh, Mark, thanks for joining us today. And uh, Thank you for having me. We're going to jump right into it. How much longer can these short sales go on? You know, I get that question all the time. You know, <laughs> realtors say, gee, it's been going on so long. Uh, how many more distressed sales are there? You know, I read an article in the newspaper just yesterday that the banks were laying off hundreds of employees in the mortgage department. And I thought, well, that must be because they're doing less refis and sure. things. But I read it a little further, and it had a lot to do with distressed sales uh, being reduced at those banks. And so they're not, uh, you know, they don't need that big short sale department. One would think at first look, well, that must mean there's a lot less short sales right. if they're doing that. But honestly, what these big banks are doing is they're transferring a lot of these distressed loans over to the smaller lenders. So it's not that they're processing them quicker and getting them out, they're letting someone else do it. From what I've seen, I mean, a lot of them are getting sold when they become distressed, uh, distressed loans and the bank isn't dealing with them anymore. Also, you know, early on in the process, 2008, 2009, uh, there was an awful lot of these, these bad loans that we heard so much about, subprime loans and right. things. And, and, you know, all those have long since sure. gone bad. Those short sales have already been concluded. So really what we have left now is, uh, you know, normal situations that, that homeowners come across. They're getting divorced, they're getting married, the family's growing, the family's shrinking, a job transfer. So they need to move and their house is still underwater. So what are they going to do? They need a short sale. Right, so, so it's more of the, I would say more of the conventional loans rather than the absolutely, adjustables yeah, where finding, that was the reason before. Now there's different reasons, but they're still underwater. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of Fannie Mae loans, a lot, a lot of uh, homeowners that were doing okay, they were hanging on. Right. But, you know, something happens and they don't have the money to add to it. Uh, so to how is it different then that, that, the small, that these other small lenders are servicing these accounts instead of the big banks? How well, does you it know, affect us as realtors, buyers, sellers? Well, honestly, you know, these big banks, finally, after all these, all these years, 2007, we, we started doing this, so it's been a while. And finally, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, these banks pretty much have it together, and the short sales go fairly smoothly. Right. But, you know, when they signed that big consent order with the government a couple of years ago, because they had so many problems with the robo-signing and that, right. and uh, one of the, uh, the things that they consented to was to be more proactive and sensitive to consumers, uh, to be prompt and getting answers, things like that. Well, what do you think they did? Well, and let me tell you what they did. To they, tra <laughs> they transferred the servicing of the loans to the lenders that were not required to operate under those conditions. Right. <laughs> so we're finding that, that a lot more of them have gone to these other lenders. And they're, you've explained to me before, the problem with them is they were used to dealing with a certain amount of volume. Now there have been a lot more things on their plate, so things are, are backed up. So we're sort of self-defeating the whole thing. Well, you know, these, some of these smaller lenders, you know, they, they were servicers and they did have some short sales, but it's almost like, uh, you know, a little widget factory uh, all of a sudden getting the Walmart contract right. and instead of having to produce a thousand widgets, they have to produce a million. Right. And so there's going to be growing pains and I think that's what's going on with some of these smaller lenders. Gotcha. Aquin, Nation Star, SLS, some of, these, some of these smaller lenders, they're having real problems and, and we're having problems negotiating Jeez, with them. Never ending. So uh, I know one of the things on top of everyone's mind is the Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act. Anyone that's been involved in short sales know how we've been affected. So I guess it expired last year, right? Where are we at on that? You know, a lot of people ask me, um, okay, this Mortgage Debt Relief Act is, what has this got to do, you know, with, with writing off the debt? And a lot of homeowners don't understand. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do whether the bank decides whether they're going to write off the deficiency or not. Right. Now, these days, we get almost all the banks to write off the deficiencies, 24 out of 25 right. uh, on first mortgages, and probably two-thirds of the home equity lines and stuff as well. Uh -huh. uh, that's still happening. Uh, what the Mortgage Debt Relief Act 
uh, dealt with is how, what are the tax implications after the deficiency has been written off? Right. Because the IRS mandates that the bank has to send a 1099 to a homeowner for the full amount uh, of the balance that was written off by the bank. Right. And uh, it could be treated as ordinary income if there's not some satisfaction or some kind of uh, relief uh, through the Mortgage Debt Relief Act or something. Now, the Mortgage Debt Relief Act did expire on December 31st of 2013. There is currently a bill in Congress to reenact it retroactively, by the way. Okay. Uh, it'll certainly be retroactive if it's reenacted. There is no real opposition from either political party, so it's not so much that, that it's going to be a point of contention. It's a priority that's fairly low, and right. that's the problem. They haven't taken it up yet, and we're hoping that they will. But I do just want to mention one other thing. Uh, under the IRS Form 982, which is the insolvency clause in the IRS, most homeowners will find that if they qualified for a short sale, probably probably they won't have to pay any tax associated with the deficiency write-off anyway. Right because they're insolvent under the definition of the IRS Form 982. After all, you get to take the entire deficiency balance, the amount being written off, and you get to put it in the liability column for right. the purpose of determining whether you're insolvent. So I think the best advice still is, though, if you're in a short sale situation, because you don't know how things could change, mm -hmm. you don't know how long that'll be in effect, you don't know if they're going to uh, renew the relief act, so you might want to get it done before the end of this year. You know, I... I, I th tell realtors over and over to, to urge homeowners, you know, if you're sitting on the fence, if you're not sure, you're kind of getting used to that free rent, you right. haven't been paying for a while, you know, this is all going to end eventually. And the banks are getting a little bit tougher, slowly but surely, as the problem is coming under control. The best idea is to get that short sale out of the way, get it done right. now, and move on with your life. The most important thing, especially in the state of Florida, is to be able to walk away from the transaction owing nobody any money sure. so you can resume your financial life right. and you don't have uh, a deficiency balance dogging you for the next 10 to 20 years. Absolutely. Now, something new that, uh, that a lot of us are not used to running into on short sales is this auction.com you were oh, telling right. me about. So yeah. while we have time, let's explain okay. what, how that works and what can happen. Well, some of the banks, some of these banks I was explaining to you that, that are the smaller servicers, Nation Star specifically and to a lesser degree, Aquin are the main two that are doing this. And they got an idea in their head one way or, the, or another, I'm not sure how, that, uh, that some of the short sales ought to be put on auction.com to make sure that uh, a fair price has been offered sure. for the property. Of course, the problem is that when the short sale is submitted, it's submitted with an offer contract that's been fully executed by the owner. So you actually have a valid contract. And, and there's been a lot of problems where uh, you know, realtors have been up in arms. Uh, and the bank says, well, we want it to go to auction.com just to make sure it's the best price. And frankly, the owner doesn't want it to. The realtor doesn't want it to. And, it, and in the beginning, uh, we thought it was going to be a huge problem. Uh, we fought the first one on and on and on and finally gave up and, and recommended to the owner, go ahead and do it, what have you got to lose? Um, you know, the bottom line is that the bank can refuse to do a short sale for any reason, sure. so they really have a trump card. But anyway, it went to auction.com and lo and behold, nobody bid on it. And at the end of the month, it came back. And uh, since then, we've had quite a few, and we, uh, we just uh, let the realtor know, let it go to auction.com. None of them, we've gotten 10 or 15 that have gone there, not one has come back with an offer that has resulted from it being on auction.com. Beyond that, we've kind of turned it around on them because sure. now, now what we're doing is saying, how can you possibly counter the offer price that's been submitted? You couldn't get a better offer. Right. So, so the bottom line to, to sellers, buyers, and agents is, don't get scared when this happens, but it's a new step. So your offer goes in, yeah. the bank says, well, that's all well and good, but before we move forward on this, we want you to list it for 30 days on auction.com. And yep. you're saying the offers aren't coming in there anyway, right? And that maybe you even have more leverage. When you don't get an offer, now they come back and say, oh, how about that buyer you had? I said, well, not so fast. 
Exactly. You know, maybe we yeah. jump in the gun. Maybe it wasn't worth what you were offered before. You know, like everything else in short sales, they don't print a book. They don't <laughs> send out instructions. It's the school of hard knocks. Sure. You know, we're, we're at any given time submitting hundreds of short sales, or, or rather uh, submitting and negotiating hundreds of short sales. And so we can see the trends. And this is just another trend that we had to adapt to. Right. And, uh, you know, we spin it, make it work our way for the benefit of our homeowners. Uh huh. And um, another thing you said was relatively new was the way HOAs are handling the short sales at the last minute. So, what's our well, best advice? For sellers and agents, if the HOAs are in arrears and you're going to submit a short sale? I don't know if it's new because HOAs <laughs> have always been a serious problem when it comes to negotiating right. short sales. The homeowners associations, you know, they want all their money and rightfully so. They need to run the homeowners association. But the problem is, is that the bank is unwilling usually to give them any more than they would otherwise be required to if the property went into foreclosure. When a bank looks at a short sale, they say, well, what would be our position in foreclosure? And, you know, if we sure. can get a better position in short sales, fine. So that means 1% of the original loan amount or 12 months of HOA, uh, whichever's less, is the most that the bank is usually willing to give to the homeowner association. And a lot of attorneys have been coming in uh, that are representing these homeowner associations. And it's actually in their best interest, I think, to uh, let it play out and go all the way to foreclosure and they're going to get paid more rather than settle for a greatly reduced amount. And the problem is, of course, they're not going to get paid as much money either. So that is a problem. My advice to homeowners that want to do a short sale, the very last thing you shouldn't pay is the homeowners association dues because that's where so many of the short sales get caught up in this quagmire. Right, so same thing if you're the an agent on either side of that, that transaction is something you want to be aware of yeah. is whether they've kept it up, whether they're currently behind because it, it's it an may issue. be a wrench in the works yeah. at the end. Yeah. Of course, what we'll do is if the homeowner is seriously delinquent and we know it in the beginning, we're going to make allowances for that when we submit right. the short Absolutely. sale into the bank. We're going to talk to the buyer. Uh, and, and see where else we may be able to get the money other right. than what the bank is willing to give them to settle. Right. It's always great to get the information from the experts. You heard it here. <laughs> Thanks a lot uh, for having me Mark, on. Mark, uh, take a minute and tell people how they can reach you if they have more questions on short sales right. or anything else. If you do have any questions about short sales, you're always welcome to call me. Or if, if you have a client uh, that is looking to do a short sale, if it's the right thing for them, uh, you can always reach me uh, at my office, 561 841-7608. Just as for Mark Green, I'm glad to talk to anybody and I am more than happy to give any information I can to anybody else or help you with the uh, successful, successful completion of your short sale. Thanks a lot, Mark. Pleasure.